You were a staff member for uh, five minutes. I'll figure it out. Much. All right. Okay. So when's the Christmas party, and when where do I need to be? Yeah, really. Okay. <laughs> yeah, you're taking this way too serious. <laughs> All right. This is the Real Christian Manliness Podcast with Isaac and Tim Ingram. Let's get manly. Welcome to another episode of the Real Christian Manliness Podcast. And today we have a special guest with us, Pastor Me? Eric. No, you're, you're not the guest today, Tim. Okay. It's not all about you. No. We, have, we have a special guest today. His name is Eric Capace. He is pastor of Gospel Light Baptist Church in Hot Springs, Arkansas. I almost had a, a little brain moment there. How are you doing today, sir? Doing wonderful. Thanks for having me. You're welcome. Welcome to the show. All right, uh, for anybody on the podcast that uh, doesn't know you, uh, why don't you just go ahead and give a brief uh, testimony of yourself? Uh, you know, uh, uh, salvation testimony, and then where you where you're serving the Lord today. Yes, sir. Well, I uh, I was saved at the age of 13. I'd been a Roman Catholic altar boy for a uh, few years prior to that. grow up Grew up in New Orleans. Or I, I guess I should say it appropriately, New Orleans, <laughs> Louisiana, and deep Cajun uh, territory. And uh, my entire family uh, is basically, from a religious perspective, uh, Catholics. And uh, moved to Arkansas during a few years of my teenage years. My mother and dad were divorced when, when I was young. So mom moved to Arkansas. Dad stayed in New Orleans. And as a result of that, uh, we we met the Lord. I I got my mom got saved first, and then we we got saved. I could obviously go into greater detail about you know how what all surrounded that, but ultimately my brother and I both accepted Christ, and uh, we finished our high school there in Arkansas, and and then left for a long time. Went to Bible college and uh, California to be a youth pastor. Got married to my wife Carol Ann. We we've been married for 29 years and have five children, and and then we. God called us back to Hot Springs, Arkansas. It's just a unique calling to come back, plant a church 25 years ago. We're in the uh, 25th year of our tenor here in Hot Springs, the only church I've, I've ever pastored and, and still continue to pastor. So that, that's kind of a brief update of my life and where we're at. Awesome, awesome. The, the first time uh, my brother and I uh, we became acquainted with you was at youth camp. In uh, Pot of Gold Youth Ranch in uh, was it Athens? No, that's Comfort, Texas, isn't that Tim? Yeah, S- Comfort, somewhere around I there. Think, uh, <clears throat> and is that where the President's Ranch is at? I don't remember. Uh, it doesn't matter. It was camp, so we weren't there for a sightseeing. We we're there to uh, meet girls. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, but 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 the most vivid memory I have is uh, you performing some type of a kung fu move, jumping off the platform. Do you still uh, perform kung fu? Yeah, that's a great story. I was as a as a seminary student, I was mugged in Chicago <laughs> by a gang, and 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 it, you know, obviously at the time it it wasn't uh, funny. You know, when you're going through something like that, it's pretty scary. Your life's in danger, but. But after it finishes, you turn turn it into a sermon illustration, and it's a very accurate illustration. It does in, include uh, me faking that I was a, a karate expert, uh, but <laughs> ultimately it worked. I got out of the situation, <laughs> you know. But I still tell that story from time to time. That's why I got to stay in good shape so I can jump off the platform. Right? <laughs> there you go. I'm I'm pretty sure. <sighs> You may have done it at our church too at one point, but I'm not sure. But that's definitely something that sticks with you um, yeah. as, as a teenager. <laughs> it, it's been solely somewhat of a youth ministry uh, or youth context illustration. So <laughs> I, I don't tell it as much as I used to. When you don't do it when you go I think to I almost... nursing homes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, yeah. That, that would uh, that, that, we, we'd lose a few uh, <laughs> folks. Uh, you know, uh, uh, brother, another thing that I do remember vividly, and it's a little less uh, funny, but it, it's an awesome testimony, is that I remember, I think you preached at that youth camp two years in a row or three years, but every year that you were there, you said, uh, write me a letter and I promise I'll write you back. And 
Um, I'm, I'm pretty sure that's not scalable infinitely, but uh, that's something that stuck with me too, is that you're willing to uh, invest in, in young people with, you know, just snail mail at that point. It wasn't as easy as uh, typing something on your iPhone or, or Android. So, you know, that's, that's another good testimony of people that are just willing to invest in the next generation. And that's kind of what we're trying to do here on this podcast is just invest in other guys like ourselves. No, I appreciate that. And, you know, I think I developed that mentality early on in ministry because I, I felt like that growing up, so many preachers seemed to be disengaged from the the audience except for during the message. And, and so God just sort of, as a young person, uh, kind of implanted in me this thought that if, if I ever have the chance— to have a platform with youth or young people or really people in general for that matter. I want my relationship with them to go way beyond a sermon, a revival or a camp. I want I want I want to impact their lives on a personal level. And I think that's the way Jesus was. He was a personal God. He is a personal God. A lot of personal pronouns used in scripture. Mm-hmm. And so that's that's just sort of a my DNA and and, and I've continued that, you know. I, I try to at least. Yeah, and it- it may be a little bit of a stretch to make this connection, but it makes sense in my brain. But I've always heard the saying, you know, rules without relationship results in rebellion. And so you're not necessarily an authority to all the kids coming to hear you preach at youth camp, but but you're developing a relationship. And so whenever you preach that this is right or this is wrong, uh, you're developing a relationship, and that carries a lot of weight. And I, I think, I think that, um, I think that holds true. I agree. There's no question about it. And you know, relationships are becoming more and more important. I mean, they've always been important, but uh, young people desperately need mm-hmm. other voices in their lives pouring in um, because so many of them are void of that, even sometimes on a parental level. Um, so, yeah, I, I think. Being sensitive to that is vital to being successful in any type of ministry, for sure. So uh, I've said this before on the show. Everything comes back to sports with me. Uh, yeah, too. Oh, you're I, on my I've, wave right now. Right. So that's what I was going to ask you. Are you still coaching basketball? I think I've seen some stuff on Twitter about that. You know, I, I, I coached basketball for a long time. Um, and... My, uh, let's see, I coached in high school about eight years, college four years, but I just, uh, I just stopped coaching a couple of years ago. It was one of those things where I just kind of came to a crossroads, had to clear my schedule of a, of a few responsibilities. But yeah, I've, I've had the privilege of coaching. Uh, I love it. It's, it's a passion of mine. Basketball, of course, is uh, my favorite sport. And so, yes, I love it. So uh, you were in the Chicago area in the 90s, correct? 80s and 90s or something like that? Yes, that would be accurate. So is LeBron the greatest of all time or is Michael Jordan? You know, I'm a LeBron man. It's crazy. <laughs> uh, I take a lot of heat for it. My whole my, – my boys are too. We uh, we were up watching LeBron last night. What a game, man. 30, 37. Uh, and, and the guy's just oh, – 39, I'm sorry. Uh, he's crazy good. But, no, I, you know, I think – I think the reason why I choose LeBron, honestly, it's a dad thing. I'm raising three boys that are basketball fanatics in LeBron's generation. So, you know, I just decided instead of, uh, you know, creating the debate, I would just get on board. And I don't think it's going to be <laughs> too long before at least, you know, we, we're, we're able to say at best, you know, they are equals. So we'll see. <laughs> so it's a hard, it's before- a hard sale. Yeah. So can you could I mean, as a coach for so many years, I've heard guys just completely trash sports. But there, uh, for me, I think there's a role for sports and what you can what you can teach young men. Could you get into that a little bit? Oh, yeah. I mean, there's no question about it. You know, it, it really boils down to initially, I think, embracing, you know, and I know this is kind of a, a, a way I'm going to answer your question. But let me say this first. I think we've got to embrace uh, relevance in, in our culture and, and relevance is that sports is a huge thing. And, you know, we can, 
curse the darkness a lot of candle. I mean, I don't like the fact that sports is dominating our culture and kids are practicing on Sundays. I, I don't like that. And, but I can get up and scream about that on Sundays and, and maybe win a few, lose a few, or, you know, I, I can, uh, I can disciple people to make decisions about, about sports and, and, and Christ and priorities. And, and, and we do that on a, on a discipleship level, but, you know, I embrace sports as a way to influence, disciple, spend time with young people. And I think the key there is, it's a touchy subject. I don't know how many people listen to this, but, you know, I think preachers and youth pastors and dads need to stay in shape so we can continue to be actively involved physically in our kids' lives. And that's on a sports level. So even at 52, you know, I I, I love hanging out, practicing with my boys. Uh, I got to kid still in high school, a boy, I, I'm at the gym all the time, rebounding for him, hustling, showing him how to rebound. So what I'm saying is that, you know, I, I think one reason why a lot of guys reject sports is just because they've gained so much weight they can't play it anymore. And it's just a way to <laughs> <laughs> it's just a way to it's just a way to feel better. But that's cruel, isn't it? I know. I'm sorry. So let's just let's just leave it at that. <laughs> <laughs> you know, um I I just had my first daughter three about three and a half months ago. And we start a little later in life. I'm 34. And so fitness has always been something on my radar, but it, it's taken on a totally, total different meaning because, you know, hopefully she's not our only one and hopefully we have some boys. But, you know, I want to be able to uh, be in shape and, and be able to ward off any, you know, adolescent suitors or, you know, whatever I need to do <laughs> whenever she's in high school and I'm in my late 50s. So I, I totally agree with you on that one. Um, but you, know, you mentioned, you know, relevance and things of that nature. You know, the Bible says that we are in this world, but we're not supposed to be of the world. And we're supposed to minister within the culture. And if, if the culture puts a, a price on and value on sports, then trashing it's really not going to gain any, you're not going to gain any influence over anybody by trashing the things that, uh, that they're into, you know, especially things that aren't inherently uh, immoral. You know, sports is not immoral. It's the the uh, what's the word? The priority that we place on it that can be immoral. So, um, dealing with people within the culture is definitely something that gets lost in some people. No, I agree. I agree. I like to say it like this: rooted to the truth, but relevant to the times. You know, and I think. You know, honestly, it's just consistency, and I think sometimes our youth are just confused. They're confused because it seems as if we sort of pick and choose what's relevant, and so iPhones are relevant and nicer cars are relevant, but sometimes music and dress and, well, that's not included in our list because of tradition, and and so, you know, I think we've got to really evaluate our negotiables and non-negotiables in ministry and life and not tag them as liberal or conservative, but give grace and give room for people to take different positions in areas that are mm -hmm. really not worth fighting over. Yeah. And when I, we, we talked on the phone a few months ago about, you know, just some differences in philosophy and things of that nature. And I said in politics and even in religion, I'm somewhat of a libertarian. You know, if somebody wants to do this, you know, I'm not going to try to get on their case about it, uh, you know, as long as it's not directly affecting my life. You know, you know, uh, if they're not against me, then they're for me. Right. You're exactly right. And, and I, I I tend to agree with you as, as far as especially the spirit in which you're mm -hmm. you're saying that I'm not threatened by that. Uh, you know, and, and, and I don't feel like I need to read into that more. And yeah. I, again, that's something else that I think happens is we, you know, like we already we've spent, you know, 10, 15 minutes on this phone call together and we already know each other a little better. You know, we we we're more comfortable with one another. Uh, and that's really what needs to happen. We need to spend more time with people that are not just like us or people we've never met before. Mm -hmm. You know, I found out, you know, I went through a lot of years of ministry here in Hot Springs where. You know, I avoided every pastor of every every other denomination, including Southern Baptist. And now, you know, I embrace a lot of those guys. I mean, they're good guys. They preach the gospel. They love Jesus. Mm -hmm. There are going to be some differences in doctrine and 
they may not share my pulpit, but I'll, I'll, I'm, I'm glad to share a cup of coffee and 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 fight the good fight of faith with faith with them uh, in our in our community. So you know, I think it's just amazing how you know when I made some of our transitions, I was I, I lost a lot of friends, and and uh, I don't know if that's a if that's it can even happen. I don't know how you lose true friends, but <laughs> I know you can. You know, I did. I did. There was a lot of hurt and pain in that, and then I began to realize. You know that. Wait a minute, um, man. I've got people in my own city that have been longing to get to know me, but I've avoided them because of preferences. I've just decided you know, I can't fellowship with them because they're not just like me. And, and now that I've dropped that, uh, wow, um, it's an incredible, incredible family out there, of godly Christian people. And let me tell you something: I've enlarged my world. I have fellowship with a lot of different pastors from a lot of different denominations. And, you know, guys, I've still found this out. <laughs> We're still in the, in the minority when it comes to really, you know, the the big picture. I mm-hmm. mean, it's it, even, even, even enlarging my coast, I still feel like, wow, there's so much more to do and so many more people to reach. Uh, I guess I didn't realize how small my world was before that, you know. Hope that makes sense. Yeah. Oh, it, it does. And it's something that's always bothered me somewhat about, I mean, not just religion, but it's kind of a, I think it might be a human characteristic that whenever people make changes or whenever people are different than you, automatically people tend to demonize them or insult them or try to make even more separation. It just doesn't, especially among Christians, it shouldn't be the case. We can agree to disagree on stuff and still mm-hmm. get along. 100%. And you'll find that all throughout Scripture. And you do find some dissension, but you usually find that somewhere down the line there was uh, there was restoration, you know. And so we're going to have, you know, some 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 differences, and and maybe sometimes those differences will lead to a momentary argument or or discussion, uh, aka Paul and Barnabas. But you know, somewhere down the line there's going to be restoration, uh, and 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 there was uh, for them. But I think you know. I'm finding now as I as I mature in my faith and grow older in the ministry and you know that what I value most is 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 my family and my church family and so you know when I truly stopped uh, being overly and I, and that's an important word there if you think about it I didn't say stop being concerned but stop being overly concerned not stop being concerned I'm still I still care about what people think about me but I was overly concerned to the point where I was subject to the fear of man. And so, you know, when, when your own kids kind of come up to you and say, dad, what's up? You know I mean? You're not really, you're not really the same at church and in front of some of your preacher mm-hmm. friends as you are in our home. Well, that's a stunner, man. I don't want, I, you know, those people are the most important people to me in my whole life, my family. And I wanted to be consistent and I had hypocrisy in my life. And so, you know, it all changed when I began to evaluate a little bit uh, those inconsistencies and and uh, things have things have changed since then. Exactly. The, you know, one there's a couple things I want to mention. Um, the, the most one of the biggest things that I believe is that being a genuine Christian is one of the most important things in producing. Um, good children and christian children it's it's whenever there's that um disparity between church and home then that's going to that's going to bring <clears throat> dis- distrust and and questions and things from from your children and and being real and that i i even put it in the name of the podcast real christian real christian manliness and uh you you nailed it right on the head is that the hypocrisy and hip- hypocrisy will will just ruin your your testimony in your own home. Um, and so that's something that's huge. Uh, you know, another thing that was being mentioned a little bit, a little while ago, was when when we try to make that separation because of differences, um, it, it's just like in politics. Whenever all you hear is what you believe, your your thoughts and your beliefs aren't challenged and they're not strengthened or even faults aren't being brought to light. And so no matter what issue it is, if all you hear is the way you believe on that, then you really have a weak belief system. Exactly. No, that's well put. And, you know, we need to make room for, for differences 
in our, you know, even, and boy, this, I know this is, sounds really bad, but even in our theology, because there's some things that, you know, that, I mean, are non-negotiable, non-negotiables with me in that area, obviously, the death, burial, resurrection of Jesus Christ, the deity of, of Jesus. But, you know, I've found that I can make a little room for, you know, a Nazarene brother who, who may believe at some point, you know, you can lose your salvation. I don't agree with that. I, I, I you know, I, I would think differently. And I, I, my position would, would be of once saved, always saved, if you're truly saved. But I found that that brother can still be a Christian, maybe right or wrong. We'll find out one day. Maybe I'm right or wrong. We'll find out one day. I think I'm right. Maybe he thinks he's right. But man, I can still find a way to say we're a little different in that. But we're we're still straight right on the main things, the gospel, and, and so I and I hope that's not offensive to you guys, but I just say that only to illustrate in a deeper way that uh, even gifts of the spirit. You know, we 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 think about the gifts of the spirit, and we we have uh, we have developed, if we're not careful, a you know not enough grace to allow for there to be. Uh, uh, some different interpretations about how those gifts play out and how relevant they are in the, in, in the, in the days that we live in. But that's still, I'm still now comfortable. I've, I've become comfortable with having a, a little different position with that and, and still embracing friendship with some of my Pentecostal friends or assembly of God friends. And I know that's so foreign and it sounds so strange. And when I say it on an independent broadcast, independent Baptist broadcast, I feel a little bit, like, you know, man, is this going to be the last time these guys call me? But I guess what I'm saying is <laughs> I'm trying to make room not to say, oh, Eric's a charismatic. Not at all. That's not the case. I, I, I'm not at all. But I have learned that these are good brothers and they love the Lord. And for whatever reason, there, there's there's some differences there. I don't think they're satanic or, or <laughs> lunatics. I think they just they they're just expressing their love to God in a. In, in a way that I, I, I don't quite connect with, you know, but that's mm -hmm. okay. Anyway, I hope that makes sense. No, it makes sense. Um, I mean, Isaac and I are independent Baptists, but we didn't necessarily set the show out to be an independent Baptist show. We just wanted to reach out to men and help men. And we've had guys that I don't even know what church they go to on. Uh, wow. they, awesome. they could, they could be Pentecostals or, assembly of god or whatever and we we didn't even uh, this subject didn't come up but the one thing i think we all have uh, have uh agreed on is the fact that we need men in our culture today mm -hmm. and uh, and there's people there's people even outside the church that are coming to that conclusion that what's being taught around culture and society is is causing a lack in real men uh, and i'm sure you've seen that in in your ministry i agree that's well put and, and that's that's exactly right. Whether that, you know, real man is someone who has a, a, a platform. We're all encouraged by the by the Tim Tebow's and Carson Wentz's of the NFL in, in a culture that is, I should say, football in a culture that is really suffering right now. But then again, uh, we're also equally excited about men in our local churches mm -hmm. who get up every morning and go to work and and uh, and and stay married to their wives and love their children and, and, and are involved in their local church. I mean, you know, those unsung heroes that are doing something very courageous, and that is just loving their wives and loving their kids. That's courageous to me, you know. Mm -hmm. And I, I don't know if I've mentioned it on the podcast before, but whenever, <laughs> whenever I think of uh, – like my grandfather, you know, my, my grandfather, I'm not sure if he was saved. Uh, you know, I don't know. I'll find out one day, but he was a, he was a manly man. You know, he, he served in the air force for 20 plus years. He owned his own, uh, electronic shop. He stayed married to his wife. He had three kids who were product or four kids who were productive contributors to society and now he's got grandchildren and great grandchildren that are uh, that are doing the same and you know we just need we we need men like that that also are walking with God and living a spirit-filled life uh and and that's what this world needs that's what this society needs is is real men that uh not only are men but they're godly men and they're christian men 
Hallelujah. Yeah, no, I, I'm 150% in agreement with everything you just said and don't know how I could add anything to that. So, <laughs> excellent. So um, we, we've got probably got about five, six, seven minutes left. Um, I like to ask some of these questions if we have time. And so I'll ask you, what is what is your definition of a real Christian man? Yeah, I'll try to be as brief, and that way you can ask you know as many of those questions as possible. Uh, I think a real Christian man is is someone who is uh, is Christ-like. You know, because the the definition of Christian is to be Christ-like, is to be like Jesus. So a real Christian, a real Christ-like man, is someone who is trying to be like the God Man. And so, you know, my desire is to be more like Jesus every every day, and that's a, a, a huge, huge challenge. Who is, other than a, a father figure or a pastor, who is your hero? You know, he just passed away. His name was Cliff Kaufman. I just buried him about two weeks ago. He's a member of our church for 25 years. Cliff, um, Cliff was, uh, he died at age 87. Um, he was an incredible example of faithfulness, of manhood, of godliness. He was a layman. Never, I, I would ask him to be a deacon almost every year. And he would say, you know, preacher, I, I think I'll decline from being a deacon, not because I'm not honored or even qualified in your mind, at least, he said. But uh, I think what I want to just do is, is is just be that guy that you can always look up and see sitting there and uh, with a smile on his face and, and, a, and, a, and a jump in his step. And he said, and I, and, and I miss that. I, 25 years, uh, he mentored me. I sent him a Father's Day card. I sent three men a Father's Day card. My dad, uh, a gentleman uh, who was very important, influential in my life uh, as a pastor and then I sent Cliff every Father's Day. Cliff got a, a Father's Day card for me because that's that's who he was to me, a father figure mm-hmm. and, a, and a great example. What what kind of advice would you give to uh, a young teenager or single adult uh, that's trying to be a Christian man in today's society? You know, I think that advice would be more than anything else, and this sounds a little bit shallow at first, but I've just really stuck with this advice when I'm asked a, a, a very specific question and, and I'm trying to give a very specific answer, and it would be this. You know, spend time with God every day. You know, don't don't allow yourself uh, to leave home without having at least spent uh, one to five minutes um, in in. in and devotion uh, t- to God, whether that's prayer, Bible reading, Bible study, Bible memorization. I just really feel as if we've, we've got to emphasize the importance of prayer and Bible study and, and Bible reading in the lives of our young men, because you can't live this life without it. It's impossible to stay away from sin and temptation without God's word being deeply implanted into your life. I mean, I and I, I just lived by that. I continue to live by it. I can't do this by myself. I can't be faithful to my wife. Uh, it's impo- Look, I, you know, I'm not afraid to say that, 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 that there's times when I struggle in my thought life, when I struggle and, and, and I desperately need an anchor uh, of scripture in my life to, to keep me where I need to be because it's, 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 there's just, the devil's got a target on me and every man out there. And we've got to stay true to God's word and to prayer. Amen. Amen. Uh, Tim, you have anything you want to add before we start winding this up? No, I think it's time to shut her down. Awesome. Well, thank you, Pastor, for uh, agreeing and and being persistent, getting your Skype set up so you could uh, be on the call with us today. (laughs) Thank you. Yeah, that was funny. I felt like I, I am known in this ministry as being illiterate. I have a great secretary, a great tech guy, and they just helped me. So thank you, bro. I need to send you a check. <laughs> you were a staff member for uh, five minutes. I'll figure it out. It's got to be much. All right. Okay. So when's the Christmas party, and when? where do I need to be? Yeah, really? Okay. Yeah, you're taking this way too serious. <laughs> all right. All right. Well, uh, thank you again, and uh, thank you, everyone, for listening. I hope you uh, gleaned some value. I think there was a lot of good, uh, good nuggets and things that you could uh, – 
take to heart and, and start applying. I know it's the, the same for me. So uh, we will see you next week on the Real Christian Manlin, uh, blah, the Real Christian Manliness podcast. We'll edit so. that out. We'll edit it out. Yeah, you got it. <laughs> see you guys. Thank you for listening to the Real Christian Manliness podcast. We hope you enjoyed our show. Now, if you could do us a favor, go over to iTunes and leave us a five-star rating. That way, other people can find us easily in the rankings. And if for some reason you don't think we deserve five stars, give us whatever you think we deserve. But please explain why we got that rating in a review. Now, make sure you subscribe and have a great day.